This video is sponsored by Squarespace. Can a one by setup like this ever actually work on a road bike and replace a conventional two by setup like this? Well, in this video, we will find out. I'm gonna ride the same route and see what the differences actually are. So this is the bike I'm using, my trusty giant TCR with a SRAM rival access group set. And I've got a 4835 chain set up front and a 1036 cassette on the back. And as a setup I've been running for the last year or so and it works really well. So why bother with one by at all? Well, like many advances we take for granted on a road bike these days, a modern road bike at least, a technology that first found its footing in the mountain bike world. So if it works on a mountain bike, could it work on a road bike? And quite a few people and companies have been dabbling and exploring with one bike on road bikes for about the last 10 years. But this year, if you watch any pro bike racing, you might see quite a high profile rider in the shape of Walt Van Aert riding a one bike setup. So his team switched from Shimano to SRAM and because SRAM are really intense, it seems, on ditching the front mech and going one by, he has used a one by setup at select races, Milan San Remo and most recently Paris-Roubaix. And I was sat on a sofa watching that race and wondering whether now is the time to explore one bike on a road bike. So the plan, nice and simple, I've marked out a 10 kilometer course, so about six miles, on some of my favorite roads here in the Cotswolds. Got my favorite climb, the W, up to Minchinhampton, where I am now. A fast descent and some flowy undulating roads to see how they compare. I've got a power meter, heart rate, but I'm going to try and ride the same speed, about 30k an hour average, and then do two by and then one by and see what the pros and cons are and what the differences actually feel like out here in the real world where it actually matters and not in the lab. So now time for a switcheroo with the chain set. This is a 46 tooth rival chain set. I actually wanted a 44 tooth chain ring, but this is all they had in stock at the bike shop online. And that straight away is the first issue with one by. You have to know what chain ring size you need for the riding and the terrain you are riding on. And there are easy calculations you can do online to figure that out based on the current setup you have, your speed, RPM, and our data like that. But I got for a 46, so smaller than a 48. So let's crack on. I don't recommend doing this in a muddy lay-by by the side of the road at all. But doing it with SRAM should be fairly easy. We have the wireless front mech, of course. The trickiest part is breaking the chain. So I'm gonna try and reuse the pin here, which I don't recommend. Onto that, and use the pins. And that is the front mech. Oh, my goodness me, that's muddy up in there. Yeah, straight on like that. I recommend using a torque wrench if you have one. I didn't bring one with me today. Okay, like that. And that is how you do it. Put the pedals back on. So far, it feels the same. And it's only looking down that I know I've got one by instead of two by. Right, once more onto the hill and I switched down to a small ring on two by setup. So I have a feeling I may struggle here on this chain ring size. And there we go, straight away in my smallest gear, easier gear, nothing left in reserve. I 
Oh, wow, two runs done. While I catch my breath, and before we dive into the results of that testing, let me tell you about today's sponsor, Squarespace. If you need a website to empower your online business selling cool bike products, a blog to share your opinion on the cycling world, or a nice portfolio gallery website for your photos, then Squarespace is a platform that makes it super easy and quick to get your own website up and running. There are loads of cool templates to choose from. Editing the design is super slick. And behind the scenes, there are powerful analytical tools to enable you to take your website to the next level. So if you like the sound of that and want to start a website this year, you get a free trial and 10% off your first purchase by using my special code and link down below in the description. Before I share the results of this test, I want to urge you that this video isn't sponsored in any way and I have no hidden agenda around the results of this test. And amazingly, I rode at the same consistent speed for each run and completed the two by test in a time of 22 minutes and 35 seconds. And the one by test, 22 minutes and 36 seconds. So call me Mr. Consistent. So my average speed for the two by test was 29.6 kilometers per hour. And the one by test was 29.4 kilometers per hour. So a little bit slow on the one by test. And for my power, because I've got power meter pedals here, I my normalized power for the two by run was 256 watts. And for the one by run, my normalized power is actually lower with a figure of 233 watts. Don't really know what to make of that, but those are the results. Let me know what you think by leaving a comment down below. So power and speed is one thing and all very well if you're into that, but unless you're racing and you're a regular enthusiast cyclist like me, as I'm sure many of you are, you probably are more interested in the kind of riding experience of one bike versus two bike. And that was very interesting actually. So I have been riding a two bike setup for the past year. And as I said earlier, it's been a very good setup. I like the lower gears I have with this SRAM setup with the massive cassette on the back and the small chain rings. It allows me to spin up the climbs rather than grind up the climbs. I don't really lose out on the top end high speed stuff because on that descent, I can easily hit 60K an hour just by going aero. So the high speed stuff doesn't really concern me. If you're racing, you might want bigger gears, but as I said before, and I will repeat myself here, I don't race anymore. Now, because I didn't switch to the cassette, I had the same 1036, the progression up the cassette and the jump between different gears was just fine. Nice and smooth as I'm used to from this setup. So no real kind of issues with finding the right gear, the right cadence. And for most of the route, especially the flowing parts, I couldn't tell I was on one by versus two by. It was only on the climb that I really felt the disadvantage of my one by setup. But luckily it wasn't too steep and I was able to keep it spinning with a cadence dropping down to around 75 RPM. But anything steeper, I would definitely have struggled. The SRAM Access app also reveals more interesting data on gear usage. On a two by setup, I never used the two lowest gears, but did use them a lot on a one by setup. And on both setups, the 15 two sprocket was the most used with an even spread between a 19 and the 13. So I definitely need a smaller chain ring. I did try to buy a 44, but they were sold out. So I think on that, I would have been okay. And that is part of the problem of one buy. You have to pay a bit more attention to your setup and get the right chain ring to suit the riding you are doing. The other option, of course, is a bigger cassette. And SRAM does an Explore 1044. And that probably will give me the extra range I needed and wanted on that climb. So that's a possible avenue for me to go down in a future video to swap out the cassette and unfortunately rear mech as well. So quite a pricey upgrade and see whether a bigger cassette with this chambering or a 44 on the front will give me all the range I crave and need on the hills I ride here in the Cotswolds. When talking about the pros and cons of one by versus a two by, we must of course address efficiency. And generally, one by is considered to be less efficient than two by. And Velo News did a good test a few years ago with ceramic speed. I put a link to that article down below in the description, worth reading. And simply put, they found a one by system wasn't as efficient 
as a two by across all the range of gears by two, three watts or more in some cases, and depending on cross chaining and so on. Now, in my real world test away from a laboratory, could I perceive any efficiency losses with a one by versus a two by? Well, no, <laughs> I couldn't tell any difference at all. So what's my verdict then? Well, I'm going to boldly sit on the fence and say inconclusive. I want to continue testing one by over the next few weeks, maybe try a smaller chain ring and a bigger cassette and see how it gets on. But I will say that this is the best experience of one by road I've ever had. Better than when SRAM tried 10 years ago when it was 11 speed. So I think the advances with group sets, with 12 speed, 13 speed even, and bigger cassettes makes a one by a more feasible option for more cyclists than before. And there are definite pros. I mean, it looks amazing. There's a bit less weight if you're a weight weenie. Claimed aero improvements, but I'm not really that bothered by that. But it's a simplicity of looks, one less battery to charge up, one less component to fail, and that simplicity of shifting as well. If you nail the gearing ratio setup compared to two by. But I think it's fair to say from the testing that two by just works more easily and more readily for most people. And it's still gonna be a more viable option for most people going forward, especially if you live somewhere lumpy with a few heels where you want that top end and that low end and nice smooth gaps between the gears. So I think the verdict is that two by is probably better for most people. But if you are prepared to tinker with your bike and you like the benefits of one by, then it might be worth exploring because it's definitely better than it ever has been. And I can only see it getting better going forward. And we are now seeing bikes frame developed entirely around one by from 3T and Vielo and others as well. And if you want to know a bit more about the differences between one by and two by, then definitely watch this video from about two years ago up there. And if you haven't already, a sub to the channel by hitting the button down here would be amazing. Help support me doing videos like this going forward. Anyway. That's all for today. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you again very soon.